Hi everybody, it's Josh with Talk About Trek, and I have just finished up not another Trek book, but the new Trek game, Star Trek Resurgence. And for the uh, for an avid Trek book lover like myself, the game was the game was a treat because basically I was playing through a playing through a book, playing through a visual novel. You know, uh, Star Trek Resurgence is not like your typical game. You're basically given this story, you know, to follow through, and then you get to make choices that will interact and, you know, kind of change how the story's going to go. So, uh, the book is, or the, the game is preceded by a series of comic books. It's a series of five books, and uh, it does kind of introduce you to the ship and to, you know, some of the crew, to the captain mainly. Uh, but the main characters that you play in are new to this, and uh, you can see them pictured, pictured, right there, 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 there they are. Anyway, uh, and that is uh, Jar Rydak, who is the new first officer of the USS Resolute, and Petty Officer Carter Diaz. So these are the two characters that you get to play in as in this game, and uh, it really gives a fun kind of. I don't know, just a fun mix to the game, too. Because uh, you get the first officer, and then you get the lower decker. And playing the game, I could not help but be reminded of... Uh... Oh, my God. Rutherford. Man, it took me a long time to get there. Jeez. I had to go around, and I think Mariner, Boimler, Tender... Rutherford. But I, I couldn't help think of, of Rutherford from Lower Decks... Uh, because of uh, Diaz's kind of enthusiasm, he was just like a very, just a very like happy character, you know. I just want him to say like, okie dokie just once, you know. But uh, and I guess it also made me think of a lower deck style game like this with comedy would just be so fun. Like they really need to get on that. So anyway, uh, this game was made by Dramatic Studios, and. Uh, They've been working on it for, I don't know, a good amount of time. And you can kind of tell that, I guess, the uh, the focus of the thing is, of course, on the the story and then also the, the voice acting as well. So if you're looking for, like, a high-action gameplay thing, this is not what you're going to get. Uh, there is a little bit of exploring scenes where you've got to do some work with your tricorder, uh, a few little action scenes, maybe with the phaser and some stuff on a shuttlecraft, and it kind of varies. And I guess what's good about it is that it kind of it does mix it up. Because if it were all just one of these things, that would probably get boring. But since you've got a mix of you go from the phaser scene to a shuttle scene, and then a lot of the stuff with the the lower decker Carter Diaz was uh, just like fixing this thing. Uh, working the transporter console and finding the right thing to get through. So kind of a little series of mini games and things like that to do. Uh, but again, varied and mixed up enough where it stays fun. And I definitely had my share of uh, failures on the, the phaser scenes too. That kind of took me a little bit of getting used to. But then I became a phaser pro and, and that was fine. Uh, the story of the game is very interesting and again I was playing the game at the same time I was reading a very interesting Star Trek story and the two of them almost started even kind of go together in my mind at some, in mind at some point but uh, the story is basically the Resolute is sent out to uh, negotiate between the Hotari and the I always I always want to call them the Elysians but they're the, uh, the Elidians am I getting that right? I get down here I'm pretty sure they're, they're the Elidians. Anyway, yeah, the Elidians and the Hotari are against each other. The Hotari have been, like, mining for the Elidians. So they're, we're here to kind of negotiate a dispute between them. And you get to make all these choices as uh, Jara Rydak as far as, like, kind of choosing sides. And also interesting choices where you get to kind of kind of pick, like, who you're choosing sides with, even on your own crew, you know, where you've got to pick 
this person's idea or this person's idea. And if you don't like this person's idea, then they get like a bad opinion of you, and then that kind of colors how the rest of the game goes. Now, what I really want to know, and I'm ex the only way I can find out is by playing it again and again and again, is how much the decisions you make do affect further and further, like down the road, down the line. Uh, for me, I was actually... Now, I'm not going to go into the whole story of this game right now, but to summarize, you basically have to, you start by mediating this dispute, but the mystery gets even deeper and deeper when it's revealed that there is uh, Takanian technology. And um, that is from uh, a single episode of TNG called The Last Outposts, where they're you know, stuck on this planet, the the energy from there, and the Ferengi ship is drained, and they uh, they meet with this Portal 6-3, the last guardian of the Takana Empire. And uh, anyway, it's a very fun episode. You should go watch it. But that's where, like, this whole story comes from. And you can even see in the Star Trek Resurgence loco, or loco, loco, the logo right there, that the, uh, the flame, the symbol of the Takana Empire is right there. So the story is about basically this takeover, these renegade Takans kind of coming back from uh, the dead and, and trying to take over the galaxy. And uh, it's very interesting. It kind of goes into a lot of different directions. And uh, again, you get to go back and forth between Jara Rydak and Carter Diaz and each of them is playing like an important part in the story, but like a totally different kind of section, you know? So uh, they bring in some uh, legacy characters. There is uh, Ambassador Spock who's brought in to help. He doesn't play a big role, but he's kind of there to just kind of give some advice every now and then. And you get a chance to impress Spock, which always makes you feel good if you can make Spock like you. Uh, and then, of course, they bring in Captain Riker of the Titan. Ooh, that was cool for me. I like that. But then I, I did not impress Captain Riker, and that made me upset. So next playthrough, I got to make him happy. I, I didn't like that at all. In the end, I think we were friends, but when I first made looked at him and we like talked, he made like a mean face at me, and I didn't. I was not. I didn't like that. So uh, later on, they bring in uh, uh, Mark Rolston as Portal sixty three which is kind of funny. He, uh, Mark Rolston was a, kind of a TNG or a Star Trek guest actor who did, uh, let me see, who was it? Most famously, I, most, most famously, you would remember him from the uh, episode Eye of the Beholder. He was, uh, who did he play? Uh, anyway, he's been in a lot of stuff too, but he, he was in a, uh, it was kind of funny that they brought this TNG and this other kind of Star Trek guest actor back to do the voice of one of the main characters, which is Portal 63, which was the, the guy from the original episode. So it's kind of funny when they bring him in and he like becomes part of like their crew to help them out and, and save the day. And there's some scenes in the end which are a little silly, but they're fun. Uh, and again. Uh, the game is just, for me, it was just getting to interact with this very fun, very interesting Star Trek story. And the the part about it that I guess lends replayability, of course, is that now, not right away, I'm going to give it some time, I can go back again in the future, I can play this game, and I can make some different choices and see where that's going to take me. So I'm definitely interested to do that. Because I was not happy with my ending. And I want a better ending for my for my lower decker card DS. But I'm afraid the only way I can do that is by sacrificing someone else. So how how can I do I don't know. It's gonna be a tough choice the next time I play through, and there will be another playthrough for sure. But definitely uh, this is a game for Star Trek fans to play through. Because there are so many little things, there's so many fun little things, uh, just little references and just little chances to see and do and work the transporter console and work the subtle craft. And and then at the end, there is just kind of that excitement too as you're making these kind of last minute decisions 
on what to do and was it the right thing to do? Could I have saved more people? Could I have saved these people? I'll have to play again to find out. But uh, all in all, it was such a good experience. And I'm hoping that this is not just kind of a one-off. And this will maybe be the start of a new era of Trek games coming around. Because I see a lot of potential with more games like this. Like I said, they could go even into like a like a humorous side with like lower decks or I can only imagine the fun thing they could do with some kind of strange new worlds. But just there's so many options. I just wish that they would someone would really take it and someone that loves it would really take it and uh, just give us much much more. So uh, whoever made this game obviously did put a lot of love into it. Uh, the voice actors I was impressed all the way through with all of them. I, I really thought they all did a great job, especially the two main characters, which were, uh, oh, I'm going to say, Cretia Bajos as Commander Jara Rydek and Josh Keaton as Petty Officer Carter Diaz. Uh, did excellent work. Of course, Frakes reprised himself as, as Captain Riker. Uh, oh, Deborah Wilson, who has done a lot of voice work, uh, does two voices in it. And um, I think does a great job. Uh, I'm not sure many of the other people, but all in all, the, the voice work was great in the thing. So uh, I think maybe there was a little bit of like performance issues, but it seemed like that was kind of mostly at the beginning. And then I had like a little bit of stuttering here and there, but nothing that was terrible at all. Everything kind of really went smoothly. There was just a few things that maybe my computer wasn't really happy with. So, uh, but other than that, performance was good. Again, voice acting was good. The story was great. And I want to go back again and I want to try it again to see how I can make it different. So, you know, what else can I do to, to make a better ending for, for my guy? Because I really, like I said, I, I don't like how it went down for Carter. So, all right. So that's. That's all I have to say about Star Trek Resurgence. And again, we're going to go back to it in the future. And when I do, I definitely will talk again because I want us, I want to be able to talk about how much this game can change on a different playthrough. So uh, that'll be the idea. So uh, that's it. Thank you all so much for sitting with me and talking about Star Trek Resurgence. And we'll be back again soon for more Star Trek book talk, game talk, and uh, fun. As always, live long and prosper, and we'll see everybody in the next one. Goodbye.